when you enter a medical icu there is one condition which is guaranteed you would encounter is ards this ards has a very poor prognosis or i can say the mortality rate is pretty high in cases of severe cases hence it becomes very essential to understand what causes ards how do we say patient is going into or has developed ards and very importantly is how to manage this ards effectively and in this video i'll be talking everything about ards in a simplified manner so keep watching this video till then so let's get started this ards is acute respiratory distress syndrome so it's an acute in nature and having diffuse injury with a inflammatory background and can be life threatening in a severe scenarios now this ards is defined on the basis of berlin's criteria which has four points one it should be acute in onset less than 7 days or you can say less than 1 week second bilateral infiltrates on the x-ray as you can see over here in this x-ray but with this x-ray only you will not be able to make sure is it cardiogenic in origin or non cardiogenic in origin hence comes the importance of point number 3 of berlin's criteria that you have to rule out any cardiac pathology using echocardiography and then comes the number 4th which is the very essential and the most important one is checking and estimating the pf ratio pf ratio is nothing it is pao2 by fio2 now pao2 is partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries the normal value is 75 to 100 mm of mercury or you can say 80 to 100 mm of mercury and obviously this is in millimeter mercury you need to know the values in the kp for all those who are working in the uk or uh, you are preparing for exams like plab or mrcp and this mrcp is very close to my heart right because i keep teaching and i i also clear this exam so you need to know the values in kp when you are going with those exam so the normal value of po2 would be 10.7 to 13.3 kp or you can say uh, you can have the ranges 10 to 13.3 kilopascals now that is about pao2 what we have in the denominator is FiO2, that is fraction of oxygen in the inspired air. If patient is breathing and is on room air right now, obviously the room air we have in our surrounding is oxygen of 21%. Hence, the fraction will become 0.21 for that patient. If you are giving 40% to the patient, FiO2 will become 0 0.40. And once, once you know that, right, you obviously have to get an ABG. See the PO2 divide by the fraction of uh, oxygen on which the patient is on and you get the PF ratio. Now based on that PF ratio, we decide the severity of ARDS. Take into account that your yeah, PEEP, which I'll be talking about later, is more than equal to 5 centimeters of water. Then we categorize into three. Mild, moderate, severe. Mild is taken as 200 to 300 millimeters mercury or in the kpa we say 26.6 to 40 kpa moderate has 100 to 200 millimeters mercury and in kpa it would be 13.3 to 26.6 kpa severe ards is less than 100 millimeters of mercury and if we talk about in the kpa it is less than 13.3 kpa so this is what we actually uh, have to have to calculate and say which severity index or what is the condition of the patient and hence that decide the prognosis of a patient and uh, your intervention I mean your, your rapidity of managing everything that changes right depending upon where is the patient lying in which category and hence if I talk about severe ideas that just says patient has severe hypoxemia or you can say refractory hypoxemia and just try to calculate normal pf ratio right you should be knowing that if a patient is having 80 to 100 right let's say let's suppose patient uh, has a pao2 of 100 and fio2 of 0 0.20 or 0 0.21 calculate and just remember this is the normal and write it down in the comment section right i need to know whether you are understanding or not okay then further uh, if you talk about uh, the causes, what causes this ARDS? First of all, it could be the direct causes. Having said that, the most common 
reason that the direct causes the pulmonary causes is pneumonia second patient having aspiration patient having lung injury or the lung condition patient having inhalational injuries so all these are mainly the 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 causes of the pulmonary right where there are direct uh, injury to the lungs whereas on the other side we have indirect causes and the very important and the most important or the most common cause is sepsis so let's say patient present to your hospital with uti or there's a surgery and patient now is in the post op period there's a, a big scar the patient underwent uh, gastrectomy let's say right and there's a open uh, open scar and there's a pus all over and now patient can get uh, complicated can go into sepsis and ultimately leading to ARDS which is very very common second and in the indirect can be pancreatitis patient third can be trauma can be burns so these are the indirect causes right okay uh, now we have discussed how to categorize and what is the criteria we discussed the causes now why it happens pathophysiology very important uh, in ARDS what happens is there is a break in the alveolar capillary membrane now we have the alveolar we have the capillaries or the vessels right now there's a break and hence the fluid oozes or goes into the alveolar and the fluid which goes inside are usually protein rich now the, if this alveolar is filled with all the proteinaceous fluid the oxygen which is coming from above right obviously from upper respiratory tract it goes inside through the trachea then bronchus and ultimately is the end unit is the alveolar if it goes over here it will not be able to diffuse into the uh, into the pulmonary vessel hence patient goes into and develops hypoxemia so very importantly is this rupture and having those fluid inside the alveolar now another thing is uh, when we expire right at the end of expiration alveoli they tend to close they tend to close right now the thing which prevents this closure is surfactant in ARDS there's a loss of surfactant also hence the alveoli are very prone to collapse at the end of expiration and that is the reason we provide peep to a patient on a ventilator i'll again come on to that later on when i talk about ventilator right i'll not complicate i'm just helping you this is the basis this is the concept so that is the pathophysiology and if i talk about the stages initially it is the exudative phase then comes proliferative phase and later on if it is more than 21 more than 21 days and patient is not improving is worsening right your antibiotics are not working there's a resistant bug patient can go into a fibrotic state which is a irreversible stage right so now coming on to the most important part how to manage these patients is first of all if patient has severe hypoxemia right you have to you should intubate and put these patient on a ventilatory support secondly you have to send the cultures from the blood cultures the endotracheal tube cultures right so you have to send that as early as possible just like which we do in sepsis and third very important is we have to manage the fluid status of a patient what we do in ARDS is we uh, go for a negative balance right now what do you mean by negative balance is you decrease the input of a patient you don't want those alveoli to be filled up with more fluid hence you give more diuretic you add diuretic to the management and you decrease the input of a patient all the drug dilution whichever you are giving the antibiotics the infusion pumps everything you have to reduce it right so as to decrease the input and very commonly you might have heard if at all you are working in the icu is intensive is talking about and saying very commonly a line is keep the patient dry that keep the patient dry means you have to achieve negative balance now uh, once you have done that coming on to the important point in the management is ventilator settings which is essential when we talk about ARDS because in ARDS already the lung is damaged right we have a stiff lung or we can say baby lung and all those things right the compliance is very much decreased now we have to go with lung protective strategies in a, in a, in a case where a patient is intubated now uh, for that we need to understand that whenever uh, we intubate or we put a patient on a ventilator is we have to maintain the minute ventilation of a patient 
Mid ventilation means the amount of ventilation which is being done in one minute. Hence, it is a product of tidal volume into respiratory rate. Now, these are the patients who are very high risk of going into volume trauma. So you cannot give more volume to these patients. Hence, what is being recommended by the guidelines is giving a volume from the ventilator, right? Obviously, it is coming from the ventilator. The volume should be 4 to 6 ml per kg. And this per kg is predicted body weight. And this is the formula. This is the formula for predicted body weight for males and females, right? So you need to calculate that whenever patient enters into the ICU and give the tidal volume accordingly. Now, if you decrease the tidal volume to such that of 4 to 6, normally we have 8 to 10 ml per kg, right? In ARDS, we decrease into 4 to 6 ml per kg. Now, the other thing is respiratory rate. We have to maintain the ventilation. If you just decrease tidal volume, what can happen is less of a CO2 washout and there is more retention of CO2 inside the body. Hence, so as to have that ventilation or so as to have that CO2 washout, you have to increase the respiratory rate. Tidal volume low, respiratory rate on a higher side and you can go up till 35 per minute. Hence, always remember, tidal volume low, respiratory rate high, trying to maintain the minute ventilation. Now, coming on to the second thing is PEEP. This PEEP is positive end expiratory pressure. I mentioned earlier in this video itself that uh, the, the alveoli are very prone to collapse at the end of expiration, right? Because of loss of surfactant. Hence, to prevent that collapse, you have to give a positive pressure from outside and that too at the end of expiration. Hence, the name is PEEP. Positive end expiratory pressure. That's it. Right? That's, that's the full form of PEEP. Right? So, don't ratify. Don't uh, have that cramming habit that, yeah, this is PEEP and all those. It is just given to prevent the collapse of the alveoli. And it is to be kept more than equal to 5 centimeters of water. Then there are other parameters which need to be addressed or which need to be taken care of uh, whenever you are managing a ventilator. I mean, all those uh, who are working in the ICU, maybe the doctors, nursing staff, assistants. So uh, they might be knowing. There's something called as P-plat, which is the plateau pressure. So we try to keep that plateau pressure less than 30 centimeters of water, right? I'm just telling you because that usually comes in the exams as well, but should be the P-plat in these patients. The other thing is called as driving pressure. So driving pressure is kept less than 15 centimeters of water. I'll just help you with one line about P-plat. P-plat is nothing. Whenever there's an injury in the, into the lung, the plateau pressure, it rises. Plateau is the time where there is no breath. There's no breath delivered or getting out from the patient. On a ventilator, when you go inside, let's say, you don't manage these patients, right? On a ventilator, we have a button which is called as inspiratory pause. And when patient is on sedation or on a relaxant and doesn't have any spontaneous breathing, press the inspiratory uh, hold button, right? And you can see the P plat. There's something called as P peak. P peak is totally different. It just tells you about the resistance in the airway. That can be because of, let's say, uh, any obstruction in the endotracheal tube. That can be because of secretions, because of the kinking of the endotracheal tube. So peep, peep peak, the peak pressure is different. Peep plateau is different. So in ARDS, remember, we have to take care about the plateau pressure. So plateau pressure should be less than 30 centimeters of water. That's it. Right? You have to remember that for your exams if you are not managing these patients in the ICU. And driving pressure, which I just mentioned, is P plat minus peep. You have to keep it less than 15 centimeters of water. So these are the ventilatory settings. And when you start a patient, right, let's say patient is hypoxemic and you somehow initially you can go with FiO2 of 1 or you can say the oxygen percentage which you are giving to the patient. Initially, you can start with 100% and then always, always try to reduce the oxygen requirement as early as possible. You cannot keep giving oxygen more than 60% to a patient for 24 to 48 hours. Cannot patient can land up into pulmonary toxicity because of the free radicals being generated. So don't be happy that, yeah, we are giving more oxygen, right? We are living in a polluted world and all those, right? That, yeah, it is good to give uh, oxygen. No, oxygen is a drug. So you need to be very cautious. So 
as a, when you see patients maintaining the saturation is more than 88 percent in these patients of ARDS, try to decrease the ox, uh, the oxygen which you are delivering. Try to go ahead less than 60 percent, right, as early as possible. Now this is about the ventilatory settings. If patient is still not responding, you have to go with prone positioning, which has a very great outcome, right? If it is done in the earlier stages and prone positioning, you should be giving for at least more than 16 hours. That is the recommendation. And we have seen many, many patients who improve with that. Then if this prone positioning is also not working, patient is in refractory hypoxemia, then the other alternative or the last answer I would say is ECMO in these patients, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And uh, again, you have to be uh, very, very quick in taking those decisions, right? Obviously, you need to have consent and many other things. You have to explain everything, uh, all the procedure and, and the risk and the benefit. And it's a costly one also. But yeah, it has better results if it is started in the early stages. Now, that's about the, uh, the ventilatory strategy you need to know. Apart from that, always, always remember to treat the cause. You cannot, let's say patient had UTI, you have to treat the cause. Right. Second, you have to take care about the DVD, right? So DVD prophylaxis to be initiated, stress ulcer to be initiated. I mean the prophylaxis. Then you have to prevent the pressure, pressure ulcer, the pressure sores. Also, uh, you have to prevent from the VAP, ventilator associated pneumonia, and prevent the patient from going into delirium or ICU associated weakness. So these are the extra add-on points. And always keep monitoring and keep trying weaning as early as possible, right? because uh, otherwise it will be very difficult for a patient right so you have to go with spontaneous breathing trials and all right try to go ahead with initiate the spontaneous trials on the ventilator i'll not be going much but yeah these are the basic things which everyone should be knowing so this is all about uh, the ards and the effective management i hope it was in a simplified manner okay bye bye take care